Hey guys, Entity from Deuces Cracked here with an expected value puzzle for you. When we have the best hand, when would we rather have our opponent fold than call? This might be a bit confusing. We're used to wanting our opponents to call when we have the best hand. This example is a bit of a trick question designed to get you thinking about the relationship between pot size and bet size in expected value calculations. As you know, when you have the best hand, you usually want your opponent to call your bets. This is pretty self-explanatory. Your hand has great equity versus their hand, and you want them to put in money bad. Many people don't think about the opposite situation, however, which does come up occasionally. You have the best hand, but because of the amount of money in the pot, you'd rather that your opponent fold immediately. Practicing calculations like this can help you understand the relationship between the size of the pot and the actions we want our opponents to take. Additionally, this usually comes up when the hand is on the flop or on the turn. Having multiple streets left generally increases the amount of equity your opponent will have when they have a losing hand. In order to determine if it's better for us if our opponents fold, we need to know three things. The pot size, our equity, and our bet size. We use each of these to determine how much money we make when our opponent calls with a worse hand, but also to figure out how often he wins the entire pot. Mathematically, we're looking to calculate the point where the size of the pot multiplied by our opponent's equity is greater than the value gained from our bet. When our opponent's equity in the pot is larger than the amount we would earn on a call, we'd usually like our opponent to fold. Let's take this hand for example. We're on the turn. The pot is $1,000 and we're betting $100. You can use expected value calculations to determine how much equity we need before we prefer that our opponent calls. What about when we're betting $500 into a $1,000 pot? Or what about when we're betting $10 into a $1,000 pot? Pause the video for a moment and work out the solutions to each of these problems. I'll be back in a few seconds with answers. Let's start by restating a few formulas. First, we need to know our opponent's equity in the pot. This is represented as 1 minus our equity, or 1 minus Q, multiplied by the pot size. Second, we need to calculate the EV of a call. What we're looking for is the point where this formula balances out, where our opponent's equity in the pot is the same as the amount that we earn on a call. So we set up the formulas and plug in the variables. For our first example, the pot is $1,000 and we're betting $100. We need to solve for equity, which is Q, to find the point where the amount of money that our opponent earns is greater than our amount earned. You can use tools like Wolfram Alpha, or you can just walk through the algebra to solve the equation. The most important takeaway isn't the math itself, but that expected value calculations can be used to help understand appropriate bet sizes, and also how the size of the pot influences your bet sizing. In this case, we come to a solution where we need an equity of 11 twelfths, or 91.66%, in order for a call to be better for us than a fold. This means if we have greater than 91.66% equity, we earn more money when our opponent calls our $100 bet than when they fold. For example number two, we're risking $500, that's the size of our bet, to win $1,000. The equation is the same, but the variables are different. Once you plug in the bet size, you can see that we need less equity than we did in the first case. In this case, we now only need 62.5% equity. That leaves us with our final example, when we're betting a ridiculously small amount into a huge pot. Now how much equity do we need? We need over 99% equity before it's better that our opponent calls our $10 bet than folds. Now it's even more obvious why we shouldn't be betting small amounts into large pots as a value bet very often. Of course, most of us knew that we needed to bet bigger when the pot is bigger. So how is this math helpful at all? Running EV calcs like this helps you understand the relationship between pot size and bet size as much as you possibly can. Not only does it influence when we're likely to bet, bluff, or try to catch a bluff, but it also should be influencing how much we bet and how much our opponents will bet. By practicing calculations like this away from the table, you become better at understanding more complex flop and turn play situations, and you'll be able to understand your bet sizing and the appropriate bet sizing much more easily. Poker is all about expected value calculations. Learn how to use these formulas to ask all sorts of different questions, and you'll not only understand the specific concepts, but you'll be one step ahead when it comes to figuring out the next question to ask and answer. 
As always, if you have any questions about the math or general concepts in this video, please ask them in the forums. This has been Entity for Deuces Cracked, signing off.